What's going on, dear viewers? I will be your host through another beautiful vintage Alpha Frog cube draft. Hi, everybody. What does this guy do? Three, four, four, three with vigilance. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get a map token. That's pretty good. Like the rate is just good enough. Three, three, four, four, three is just good. Also, Tefri is good. I'm a good. I'm a fan of him to Torok, even though it just it did kind of mess us up in our two drafts ago. I believe we just kept top decking it when our opponent had no cards in hand. There's also a strip mine, which a lot of you, a lot of you folks like. Not a big fan. I mean, would I take Nameless Sentinel over Courser of Crufix? That's interesting. I think amassing a bunch of map tokens could be fun. I think taking a Teferi here could also just be fun. I'm taking a Teferi. Oh, well, I think we're just going to take an Emrakul. Emrakul's interesting because it's kind of on the same level as like sneak attack, through the breach, reanimate. Like it feels like its own combo piece. I mean, it is, right? Like no one's hard casting an Emrakul and paying 15 mana for it. We could also just take a Ledger Shredder. I want to take Emrakul, right? Second pick Emrakul. Is this Ledger Shredder going to do more work for us than an Emrakul? Maybe. It's quite possible. Then again, if you get Teferi into like Emrakul somehow, like that's uh, pretty good. So I'm going to put it in the pile. You know, that's where it goes. That's where the Emrakul goes. I do like a Polluted Delta. Um, probably better than Elspeth or Odawara. It keeps us open for a couple things. Teferi's been fine. I don't think I want a five-minute Planeswalker here, though. I think we're just taking the Delta. Scrubland's also pretty neat. But I feel like we're more likely to be blue than black with Emrakul. Or, yeah, no, blue than white. That's what I meant. And Delta's just better. I mean, obviously, you're going to take the, the fetch land over the, the dual land. Okay, so nothing to go with the Emrakul yet, but I don't feel terrible about just giving up a Ledger Shredder. I'm going to take Celestial Colonnade here. It goes well with both of these. If we're blue-based, if we want to play this Teferi. Custody Lich did some, some solid work last draft. I'll take this guy. Solitude is a solid tude gentleman. That's pretty good. Okay, nothing really going with the Emrakul. We did pass a Thespian stage, and here's a Vampire Hex Mage, but I'm taking Solitude, and I'm going to assume that we're going to be blue-white. That sounds reasonable. We can get this Plains Swamp Mountain with Polluted Delta. This Mardu Land. We could take Luris, but obviously we're not going to be companioning Luris. Adeline is interesting. Could just take Savannah if we want to splash a green. This could leave us open to getting a breach. But then it's like, it's not great. It might just be Adeline. Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know like what direction we're really going in here. Solitude and Teferi is a nice start, but I'll take the Luris because we could really get anything here. I think Luris is probably a little stronger than Adeline in a vacuum. Could just be Elspeth or Hellbreaker Horror. We could also just take Third Path Iconoclast and be like Jeskai. <laughs> Can also recast it with Alluris. Gaia's Cradle. Wow, that is a Always a late guy's cradle. Eighth pick guy's cradle. Could be Trinket Mage. Could just be like Thalia. Thalia and, and Third Path are kind of a non bow. <laughs> like this wants you to play spells and this prevents you from playing spells. Might just be wedding announcement. This draft is in, going in a weird direction, but I really don't. There hasn't been a super cohesive theme I've seen. I want to take wedding announcement. Maybe we're just. Eh, Leyline Binding. Maybe we're just an aggro Jeskai deck and keeping our fingers crossed for like a sneak attack. If that 
I mean, if the Savai Triome comes back, it's not terrible. Baleful Strix is good, but we're not Grixis, right? And we're not going to be... We could be Esper. Eh. I think it's better than Leyline Binding right now. Oh, Lumin... Oh, the Leyline Shredder came back. That's pretty... That's pretty sweet. All right, we're going to put this guy over here, and we're just going to take Shredder. And I will take this Archangel Elspeth. Baleful Strix and Luris is pretty sweet. So is Ledger Shredder and Luris. So that's... Oh, Council's Judgment. Okay. Well. And Fe Hex Mage came back. I think I'd wrap... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take the Cathar Commando. I think it's probably just better for us. Oh, the Adeline came back as well. Okay. So this feels kind of Esper aggro -y. We just picked up three creatures that we can cast off of Luris. 12 total playables in one pack was not too shabby. It's not, no. <laughs> they love giving us, they love giving us on color moxes. I would love to take a Marsh Flats here, but I'm not going to pass a Mox Jet for, for a Marsh Flats. I will prioritize fixing pretty heavily though. I don't think this would come back. What do we got? Like, so Ponder, Goldspan, Minsk and Boo from the Catacombs. That's four. Recurring Venser Shieldred's Edict, maybe, or Marsh Flats. So we might get might get a Shieldred's Edict back. Or an Adanto Vanguard. I feel like those are gonna be the the returns. Oh, Flooded Strand. Well, that's good. Actually, is it just Shieldred? Are we just splashing blue? I kind of like Shieldred here instead, to be honest. And if we're just two colors, Shieldred's kind of busted. So is Mana Vault. Oh man, this is actually a great pack. But it's also got Omnath, Primeval Titan, Sarah Paragon, which could come back as well. Seeker's Chariot. There's a, this, this pack is very, very good. I just kind of want shoulder it. I think it's shoulder it here. That feels better. Oh, Tundra. Fantastic. Yep, that's really good. And I don't have any uh, reservations about taking anything else in this pack. The Scrubland. Did oh, an Underground Sea. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Living the dream. The only thing we didn't get was Savannah, which we saw in the last pack. But having Underground, Polluted Delta, and Tundra is pretty sweet. I also like Thieving Skydiver. Oh, what up, Shua Garner? Could just take Lotus Petal, too. We do have Luris, which makes it decent. I'm just a big fan of Thieving Skydiver still. I think it's just a good card. Also, our mana just got a huge bump. Yeah, I'm going to take the Skydiver here. Oh, Channel. That's pretty sweet. I'm also hoping to get Fallen Shinobi. Like, this is... We have Baleful Strix, Thieving Skydiver, and Ledger Shredder right now. Could just be careful concealing curtains. We do have a we do have an Emrakul, so we can just take Channel and splash it. I think Curtains is probably better than Blade Splicer here. We're definitely main white. It's an easy white card. And then it looks like we are kind of secondarily black. Maybe blue? <laughs> One of the two colors? Hmm, could be. Silent Clearing is fine. I like Lauren. I don't really care about Mastermind. Bankbuster's neat. I think I just want the Silent Clearing. I think I just want to maximize our ability to get good, good mana. Path to Exile? Sure. That seems good. Also, Days and Memory Lapse. Oh, the Marsh Flats did come back. That's what? <laughs> wow. This pack, wow, this pack was cleared out. But I mean, we'll take a Ball of Omens. That's fine. I can't believe the Marsh Flats came back. Wow, that's really good, especially with Tundra and Underground Sea. 
man. Four good dual lands right now. Oh, we got. Oh, wait, actually six. <laughs> My bad. Colonnade, Marsh Flats, Delta, Silent Clearing, Tundra Underground. Oh, also this Mox Chat, but that doesn't really count as a dual land, you know. Nothing great here. I'll just take Torsten in case we get a flash. Lotus Petal came back. Wow. <sighs> yeah, I think I like Lotus Petal over Wandering Emperor. Maybe not, though. No, I think I do like Wandering Emperor better. It just deals with a lot of things when you can flash it in and kill a creature. Like, if they attack with, like, Archon of Cruelty, you can flash it in and kill it. I mean, it's not... Some of these creatures are just... You don't want them to attack, like Emrakul, Archon of Cruelty, but... I mean, like, if it's a Gristlebrand or something. Sure. Anything else? Anything else fancy for us today? Sarah Emissary. Torok again. Pile on. We must construct additional pylons. Knight's Whisper. Don't think we want any double blue cards. I feel like we're pretty, pretty low on blue right now. We just have four single blue cards, which is pretty much fine. I don't think I want a Talisman here. I feel like Torok is kind of playable. We've been picking up Torok a lot recently, I think. Is that a first pick Torok? Not really. Giver of Runes could be good. We're not super aggro, but we could get there. I mean, on turn... Oh, get out of here, Knight of the Reliquary. Like, we have Adeline, Wedding Announcement, Luris. Like, we are trying to go, like, Esper, Esper Tempo-y creatures. Yeah, could just be Giver of Runes. I also do like Torok, but we're presuming Tor. Oh, Mind Twist. <laughs> okay. And Fractured Identity. Jeez. I think we're just taking Mind Twist here. That's pretty cool. God, Fractured is so good, though. So is Mind Twist. I don't know. It's like, it's, it's literally six of one, half dozen of another. I'll just take the Mind Twist. I do like a Creeping Tar Pit. Oh, Aklazots. Oh, man, my favorite. That guy's been very good. Like, not very good, but he's been fun. Maybe he's good. I don't know. He makes bats. He draws you cards. He makes them discard. We're definitely taking Creeping Tar Pit here. Look, they had Aklazots highlighted probably because I clicked on it, but also probably because they know I like it. That's a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Do I want a double blue card? <sighs> When we can also take an Urtai or a Touch the Spirit Realm or a Chromo Seed Shark even, which is very good. It is Jace the Mind Sculptor though. It's better than all. I'm going to take Jace. I just I have a hard time passing a Jace. It's a Jace. Well, to it, this is not a Rafine's Tower. Uh, we're going to take Season Dungeoneer here. This is a lot of four drops, but that's okay. If that talisman comes back, it'd be great, because now we do have a lot of things that we want to ramp into. But Season Dungeoneer is just nuts. Hollowed Fountain? Deal. Straight deal. Um, we also, there's a Dothy Voidwalker, a Get Lost, and a Phantasmal Image. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two cards are coming back, huh? I think it's going to be Show and Tell and Bone Crusher. That's my guess, but... We're going to have Tundra. Maybe we just, maybe we just do take, like, a a removal spell. Maybe it's get lost. We don't, we have council's judgment. We have solitude. I'm going to take the good land. I want to make sure we can cast our things. Parallax wave. Is ephemerate good for us? I don't know. Um, not really. We don't have a ton of things that are blinkable. Season dungeoneer and that's kind of it. I think we're just taking Parallax Wave. It's just very strong. I do not think we are an Armageddon deck. We are not putting a bunch of guys on the board really quick. We have Soul Herder now. 
Also, just Grave Titan. It might just might just be nice to have like a Grave Titan for the top end. Um, we do have two cards for Ranger Captain, which is actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna take Ranger Captain. We have Giver and Concealing Curtains. Pylon could be good. I also just like Knight's Whisper here, I think. I think I just want some card draw. No, you aren't, but that is what I think is coming back. Fair. Actually, you might be right. In that in that one pack, yeah, that could be. Uh, I'll take Karn. Don't think we're going to play Karn. This is 22 cards. I like all the cards so far. Oh, this guy's great. Elite Spellbinder is OP. This is this is this is a good 23. If we just play this, I'm totally fine with it. Glad I took that hollowed fountain. Oh, touch the spirit realm was nice. Student of Warfare we can also get, but I never I'm always underwhelmed by Student of Warfare. Archfiend of the Dross, sure. Oh, this is 20. Oh, look. Oh, Armageddon came back. Dothy Voidwalker, though. We're definitely taking that guy. That's the dude I was... That's literally the card I wanted from that pack. But good call, Shooter Runner. I would say we can cut blue, but, like, A, we can't, and B, like, there's absolutely no reason we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven blue sources amongst our mana base. We do have to make, like, two cuts now, though. Uh, it's a wedding announcement cut. If you have with two more creatures, draw a card. Otherwise, make a 1-1. One, one. So we play this, makes a 1-1, one, one, makes a 1-1, one, one, flips. I don't think we have that many creatures to really take advantage of it. Probably cutting a 4-drop, too. It might just be Jace, because double blue... The card advantage is real nice. Could also be Knight's Whisper. Like, if I'm cutting a card advantage card, I might just rather it be Knight's Whisper. Yeah, I think we also have Luris. We have Teferi. We have Jace. That's actually... I'm totally fine with that. I'd rather keep the Jace. Wow. This is a solid-looking mana base. Definitely white. <laughs> Okay, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That seems like an easy switch, right? This is eight blue still. Uh, one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or a nine. I think this is nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So this is ten, nine, eight. I don't even know if we need an island, to be honest. We do have like Thieving Scott, Everledger, Shredder, Teferi. We want, we want, and Belfall Strix. We do want an island early. Yeah, this seems good. 16 land, Mox. All right. Yeah, let's, let's roll it out. We have no counter spells, so we're not countering anything. What did we take? What did we take Emrakul over? There was another card I, I was thinking of taking. Was it, uh, someone tell me. Is it Scrubland? No, it wasn't Scrubland. We took Polluted Delta over Scrubland, which I think was correct. All right. Round Oon. Is this hand good? Turn two curtains. Or turn to Intrepid Adversary. Yeah, all right. What the hell? They went to six on the play. Perfect. Their name is Islands. That can't be good. Oh, wow. They played a forest. 
I am vexed. As Joaquin Phoenix would say in Gladiator. Yeah, I think we just play this guy, right? These are kind of nice that they're enters the battlefield triggers because then you can actually cast them with Luris and then still pay the, the, the kicker. Cauldra complete, huh? Well, that's pretty good. Oh, buttery biscuits. Does this have haste? Oh, Jesus. I guess we just bounce it, but then they just replay it again. That's not good, right? <laughs> Bouncing the token, that does seem good. That's smart. I feel like you went to Magic the Gathering school. Uh, I will kick it no times. It's not kicker, it's kicker. Let's stop it. Does it do a thing and scale up when you add more mana? Oh, now they're going to take a point too? God, they're going to get... Does it have lifelink? No, right? Yeah, all right. I'll take my medicine. I almost win this race. Like, that's pretty good. Oh, well, that's good. Are we going to get in a situation where our nine black mana sources are not going to show up? in a timely fashion. Maybe. No, we're not. Do I just want Teferi to survive? That's the question. And I think I do, and I think I will block here if they attack. So, we'll see. She ordered into Jace is pretty good. G gain six life. Like they're kind of they're gonna do it. Easy, easy game, easy life. You got it. Oh, that's sad. You don't need that. This is seven to equip. That's a lot, but not enough. Look, they're coming. They didn't do anything. All right, that's good. That's good. They can just kill our our Shieldred by attacking. Like they draw a card for four, four three, draw a card five four. Who likes that? You know. Could also just play Jason, bounce this guy, then play Shieldred and 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 loot. She does have Death Touch. I just don't want to. I just don't want her to die. You know. It's definitely this guy. Let's Jace first. How about that? Oh, thank goodness. I thought they were going to flash something in. I was going to be so sad. We got the planes walking boys over here. Well, those planes walking boys are at it again. Oh, they're just, they're just looting. They're just digging. Oh, that's sad. It's not just sad, it's also rude. One, two, three, four, five. Plus this guy. I think we're just seasoned dungeoneering here. It's, no, it's got to be Shieldred, right? That's got to be better. Black, black. We could silent clearing, take one, also play concealing. If we dungeoneer, we don't take one. We could also just play curtains and, and curtains them, which might be better. No, I think we want to get Shieldred out, right? That feels correct. Yep. Seen that guy before. <laughs> I mean, they're one turn away from actually activating Cauldra Complete, so... Oh, come on. 
dueling teferis that's what we're doing i mean we can also bounce their cauldron complete and then flip this guy which is kind of cool oh um what if we bounce their cauldron complete flip this guy and then get rid of their tireless tracker actually getting rid of this guy is probably better right with Council's Judgment. So we can go one, two, three, right? They're like, what do I vote for? I don't know. Oh god, we did it the wrong way. Actually, I didn't care about the tireless tracker that much, to be honest. Upheaval. Wow. What a dirty little, dirty little biscuit. Oh, that's that's interesting. Oh, that's pretty good for next turn. All right. I mean, did they just go? <laughs> do they just go? They could just go Topia, Sprawl, Talisman, Armageddon. That would be good. And then they have three lands. I mean, they have both Armageddon and um, Upheaval. It's not great. They're definitely going to go Talisman. No, they're not. Change their mind. Oh, they're just going to play something big that they just drew. Titania. Okay. That's good. Yep. Their deck is doing a lot of stuff. Wow, they have Armageddon too. That's pretty good. Probably can't beat Titania into Armageddon, so that's a sick top deck. Seven mana. Wish we had eight. Um, let's go one, two, three, four. Play Shieldred. Uh, Armageddon, Talisman. You didn't play any of those things. That's interesting. I'm doing this because if they want to crack the Sunbaked Canyon and draw a card, they're going to take two. <sighs> yep, Titania is a hell of a card. If I just play this and go to 14, we get to keep Cathar Commando up. Oh boy. We can also just steal their clue. It's not terrible. I don't think keeping the land does anything, to be honest. If they Armageddon, we're dead. We're not going to be able to rebuild. Like, we're not going to be like, okay, I'll play my one land. And then they're like, all right, we'll attack you for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's just not going to, it's not a situation where it's going to matter. I'd much rather maximize what I do this turn. Like, they can Armageddon, they're probably just going to Armageddon next turn. And I don't actually know how we beat that. I mean, they just draw a card in the Armageddon, right? What do we do against that? Like nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think this game's just over. I'll just play it out. Maybe they play wrong. I don't know. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm going to play this, and then we're just going to play Thieving Skydiver with Kicker. Let's 
to steal the, the clue token. These guys aren't artifacts, right? No? Okay. Yeah, I definitely have no no interest in timeless whatsoever. Um, I think I like I said I, I said earlier like I think I would if it wasn't alchemy based, but like, I, whatever I don't know alchemy's not our real format so. Do they want to? Do they want to let this guy resolve? Yeah, like you get to seek things in alchemy. Seek it. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Yep. All right. Do your worst. They're at seven. We can take them to two, to five, two to five. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Who's having a good time? They're making some decisions. They're going to go Talisman, Utopia... No, Utopia Sprawl doesn't do anything, I guess, right? Tireless Tracker. Something's happening. We know these three cards and a Tireless Tracker. There's the Talisman. Oh, they're not Armageddoning this turn. Interesting. F I'm fascinated. Okay. S five, ten damage. I'm taking this and going to three because I don't survive another attack, so... We know they have Utopia Sprawl, Armageddon. And then other things as well. Life from the Loam getting back three lands. Sure. Do they just die to three here, two here in their draw step? Did we just win this game because they didn't... Because they didn't life... They didn't um, Armageddon when they should have? Well, oh, they can, they can dredge. Oh, they didn't dredge. They should have dredged. What? I did not expect to win this game. This was their game. This was their game to lose. I don't know how any of that just happened. I kind of like Parallax Wave here. It gets rid of their tokens it gets rid of their living germ germy germ you can take elspeth out i think what just happened what in the earth man what up shaker of milks yeah we'll keep this this is decent a, a two drop would be great here. I do like that. So we want a second. We don't want a second white. We do want a second black. Okay. So we're just going to play this. Probably get in there. We have no creatures to protect and she can't protect herself. So. Try 
Dropping Tefri or Elite Spellbinder next turn seems good. Oh, that's a that's a that's a guy, all right. They did not play another land. Does that mean they don't have another land? Definitely underground sea here. I think we just bounced this guy. Or we spellbinder them. I do like getting Tefri down on like like before they actually have pressure. Like if we spellbinder them and they play another guy, it's gonna be harder to get Tefri out, I think. That's my Oh, that's that's the second black source. Alright, well. This guy again. No land. Don't hate it. We only have one other card we can play, and I'm pretty sure we just play it here. Oh, that's really something. Wow. Okay. Um, I guess we're getting rid of Council's Judgment, because that's a beater. This guy costs four, five, four, six. I don't think you care about Armageddon at this point. Plus, Council's Judgment can't really deal with... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Giver of Runes can't protect from Council's Judgment. Okay, so... Those are the five cards you have, plus this Council's Judgment. Good to, good to know. That's fine. Here comes an Urza. Yep. That's fine. Oh, that's fascinating, isn't it? Well. <laughs> Even mom can't save you from the ghost senate. It's true. So we have six mana. We can only cast one thing. I'm actually surprisingly tempted to Parallax Wave and just exile their three guys. Like, they just don't have much of a hand without this. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's actually even better. <laughs> yep, all right. I mean, this is a pretty good clock. Plus, we know their hand is trash. They don't have double white for Council's Judgment yet. They don't have a second white or blue for this. They're two mana away from Primeval Titan. Cosmic Rebirth doesn't hit anything. They could Armageddon, but that seems pretty bad for them. This feels pretty okay. And this is four out of the five cards in their hand. That's the fifth. So they are tefering. Tefering, if you will. They're casting this on... What are they naming? Parallax Wave. I guess they did find a second white source. I think I should have responded to this by blinking my Elite Spellbinder. <laughs> That's what Father likes. So what, what if we bounce Dryad? One, two, three, four, and then Mind Twist them for five. How does that look? Like, Dryad scares me a little more than Urza. Maybe? Actually, they can pretty much cast anything now. Maybe we just get rid of the Urza? Like, they have double for Primeval and they already have this, so... I think we just bounce Urza. Uh, 
and then mind twist them for a thousand million. So do we get Tundra or do we just get a swamp here? I think it's just a swamp. We already have, we have three white, three black. Eh, it's Tundra. So we got five cards. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, uh, one more. Okay. And we'll just get in there with this guy. I They can double block here and it's pretty bad for us. See, what if that was... What was the other card we were talking about taking over Mind Twist? Fractured Identity? I think that was better than Fractured Identity right there. Boop, 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 boop. Just putting them in top deck mode when we have Shouldered, Council's Judgment, Silent Clearing seems good. Oof, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Always with the seven. <sighs> One, two, three, four. Okay, that'll do. I guess sometimes shoulder is all you need to see. Yeah, dude. Uh, mind twist? It's not a fair magic card. What's the temperature tomorrow? Let's find out. What do you got for me, Apple telephone? High of 39, low of 25, and it's cloudy. That's sad. Um, I do wish I would draw some of my cheaper cards, like Ledger Shredder, or Baleful Strix, or Dothy Voidwalker, but whenever I draft a ton of two and three drops, I never dropped any of the two drops. Where are they at? Intrepid Adversary. 70 Bort Degrees. That's a lot. Kerwit being in Tokyo and not not being on normal time so that we, uh, we never see him is weird. Interesting. Running out the mocks. Okay. I think we're just getting a Tundra with this guy. Our mocks would have been great there. Turn two Teferi, turn two Spellbinder. Father would have enjoyed that. I'm going to crack this and make them think I'm going to counter it. But I'm not going to counter. Actually, let's get Hollowed Fountain. That's just better if we're not going to use the mana. Now we don't have a stupid Hollowed Fountain sitting in our deck waiting to, waiting to hurt us, you know? Yeah, I guess it's just Elite Spellbinder here. Lurus doesn't do anything. Time Raveler is just going to die. I'm going to daze you. They didn't daze me. Necromancy, which doesn't matter. Mystic Confluence, Shieldred, and a Swamp. I assume the, the play is Shieldred here. Because otherwise they play Shieldred, and that seems worse than... Not playing Shieldred, right? I bet they attack with Ophiomancer and we block and then they want to Necromancy our Elite Spellbinder. That's Papa's guess. This is a good hand, though. It's sad that Elite Spellbinder just doesn't get rid of the card, you know? I know they still have this on turn six. Oh, shoot, I got rid of Necromancy. Dang it. I fat fingered the, the necromancy. Oh, they're just going to attack. I mean, that's fine, I guess. I don't really. No blocks. Hmm. Fascinating. Jace doesn't do much here. Teferi doesn't do much either. I 
Could get rid of the just get rid of the Ophiomancer. Could just play Luris with no real benefit. They have a Mystic Confluence. If they draw land, they could bounce this guy, draw two. I guess they can't kill Jace after that, though, if we plus Jace. Uh, Shoulder is no longer in their hand, no, so it's it's exiled. So now we know they have Confluence, Torsten, two other cards. But I was tempted to blink him, don't, don't get me wrong. So if they spend their turn activating Creeping Tar Pit, they, they can't kill Jace because we can just block here. And they can't get rid of this guy. If they... If they play Mystic Confluence to bounce this guy, then they can't also... I feel like if we Jason plus Jace, he's actually pretty safe here. Famous last words, I believe. We do have a Necromancy. Let's not forget that. Watery Grave. I will put that on the bottom because I don't know if you have a fifth land. Okay, this is what I this is what I was expecting. That's just your turn. And they did not hit a land, so that's good. Yeah, Jace can just go to one, but now we untap with a Jace, which is exactly what we wanted. Baleful Strix is pretty sweet. Especially with a Lurus. I don't want to bounce. I, don't, I want them to actually feel like they have to attack our guy. Oh boy, that's good. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we can put Silent Clearing back. If they kill the Jace, do we want to draw the Silent Clearing? How do we want to do this? Let's make sure we... I think I want to go Luris and Baleful Strix. And I want to keep Solitude and Teferi in hand, or or one or one of these two. I do like getting Teferi down next turn if they tap out, because then we actually. So I think it's. I guess it doesn't matter if we play Strix, right? We just get to draw whatever. So we're gonna play Underground. We're gonna play Luris, and we're gonna play Strix. So I guess we can. I guess we can easily go clearing Ledger Shredder. Then we're going to go black, blue, Strickums. Draw the silent clearing. Or the ledger shredder, rather. And then one, two, three. I think we do attack because our blocking would be like, eh. If they attack with this guy, I guess we just block here. And then Jace, is, Jace dies. I want to force them to actually attack with Tar Pit, so I don't think we're going to attack here. Like, I'll trade Baleful Strix for Snake and Elite Spellbinder for Ophiomancer. I want to be in a position where I can trade the Baleful Strix and then still get it back. If they Necromancy it, like, that's fine. I could just bounce it with Teferi or Jace. Man, hitting that Water Groove is actually surprisingly good, it seems. Just kept them off five mana. So now they have Confluence, Torsten, and and Necromancy. It's not bad. We also have Solitude, which is a pretty good. Like we can actually exile their their creeping tarpet if they activate it. That puts them significantly farther behind. They hit the land. I see. What if they go Mystic Confluence, bounce all of our guys? They didn't. Oh my god. 
Whoa, this is gonna, this could be Blowout City. Like Solitude Exile Touch. To play Jace and Ledger, or to play Teferi and like kind of lock their Mystic Confluence out. And then Jace gets to live another day. Draw three. Cathar Commando killing their mocks could be really good. <laughs> uh, put two cards on top. We're going to put Clearing and Dungeoneer. Play a land. Teferi. And this guy we can just keep getting back. They could get Solitude, but I don't actually think Solitude's that bad for us. Oh, because we can just get it back, too. That's pretty good. Like, if they bring back Solitude, we can just get it back with Teferi. <sighs> Do we just bounce the Ophiomancer here? Probably, because they really don't have a great recourse for it. I'd rather just draw another card. Yeah, that seems good. So if they kill one, get rid of the other, that's totally fine. They're in a situation where they can't really play multiple things in one turn. So they have Necromancy and Ophiomancer. Two, two Mancies in hand. Hmm. I'm actually surprised how how well we've done it restricting their mana. Richard Garfield, you old you old so and so. I mean Teferi turns off Mystic Confluence. Uh Shieldred it is like six mana now. They have Ophiomancer and, and Necromancy, of which they can only cast one. They're probably considering, like... <laughs> okay, that's great for us. <laughs> like, every time they just have to replay a guy like that, it just feels like a time walk. Yeah, this is easy. Then we just get to actually recast Baleful Strix. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Does that do anything? Let's look at our top card, see if we want to give it to them. I don't think I care about that. Okay, no. Because now we're just giving them a swamp for like necromancy probably. We could also just play season... Dungeoneer. Hmm. Let's attack first. Yeah, I think with knowing what they have, I'm fine with just playing Season Dungeoneer and Concealed Curtains. Uh, yeah, one, two, three white sources. One, two, three, four black sources. I'll just get a planes. Nope, that's not the color we need. All right, we've activated both of these. Pass the turn. So they're drawing a swamp. A 
That does not help them cast an additional spell as far as I know. When did it ask that? <laughs> Was it the Jace one? Because Jace is like, would you like to use the ability? And I'm like, the ability is is when I when I added the loyalty. So what what are you referring to? Interesting. Uh, cancel that. Season Dungeoneer here. This feels like a toxic deluge turn. Which honestly, I'm kind of fine with it because we have two Planeswalkers and a Ledger Shredder. There it is. Yep, that's what I figured. This is why I was like, there's no way we're... <laughs> okay. Well... I wish I actually activated this first, but that's fine. What is Lost Well? Is Lost Well uh, Scry 2? <sighs> Create a treasure versus them losing five? Ugh. I mean, that's fine. Oh, wow. That's actually good, because I don't want either of these. Two lands, huh? That's pretty decent. Look at that guy. Plus you. Uh, let's play the Shredder so that we can trigger Jace. Or trigger the Shredder, I guess. Wait, did that not work? Will it work after? Who knows? Uh, one, two. Earlier, oh, it's cast their second spell. So Ledger Shredder was first. Never mind. I, I always thought it was draw second card for some reason. Um, do I just want a third Planeswalker? That seems possibly better than Shieldred here. Let's connive. Let's pitch. What do we got? One, two, three, four black. One, two, three. Three white. I'll pitch a black here. So everybody's okay? Seems good. All right. Your move. Three Planeswalkers seems good against the blue-black deck. I feel like they're going to have a hard time dealing with that, with no Creeping Tar Pit, with no Wrath effects that deal with multiple Planeswalkers. So next turn, we're going to create a Treasure Token. That's not great. Catacombs is better, though. You get a 4-1 with Menace. Hmm. They're really, they're really in the tank. There's that fifth land. Okay, so this guy's gone. We know you have Mystic, Torsten, and two other cards. Torsten also makes me think there's a flash somewhere in the deck. So I actually might want to be a little more aggressive. Like I think shouldered plus attack with tar pit, put two counters on something. What's that? It's like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage. I mean, that's a two turn clock. They also still have necromancy and ophiomancer. So I guess we know four out of their five cards. No, Ophiomancer's gone. So we, we just know about Necromancy, Torsten, and Mystic Confluence. 
I mean, I'm sure it's tempting to get like our solitude back or elite spellbinder. Luris doesn't do much for them. I guess it lets us cast, it lets them cast Mox Jet. But us being able to bounce like whatever they get back has to be a consideration as well. I guess we'll never know. Okay, from the catacombs. That is a thing. And it's got a finality counter, right? If that creature leaves the battle for the exile instead of putting it anywhere else. Okay, so we don't actually get it back. They're just getting rid of Ledger Shredder, right? I mean, that's fine. We still get to bounce it. It's not a thing we don't get to do. Okay, so we know Mystic, Torsten, Island, Necromancy. It's also possible we play Shoulder and look for something with Jace. But also, I think if we just get to ultimate Elspeth, it's really good. We get Concealing, uh, Luris, Elite, Baleful, and Cathar Commando back. That seems pretty bananas. I think we just have to take a turn off to do this. Uh, let's play the black source and just use it to cast this. I'm fine with only having one land in hand. Is there a card that could steal our planeswalker? I don't think so. Treachery can't. I think we just want to set up a, an ultimate next turn. We don't have anything to use our mana on. I think we actually just activate this guy. I just want the initiative back. Arena or stash? Uh, stash, right? There's no creatures to even goad. So they're at 11. We have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. If they pass here trying to miss the confluence, it's going to be a real bad time. They're like, oh shoot, I have to do it now. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming this island's gone. Okay, so they just can't do anything, so they just lose, right? Make a skelly, man. Each opponent can only cast spells anytime and they have no abilities, right? Uh, okay. One, two, three. And. Y'all like that I did it during my upkeep? I didn't even care to draw a card. <laughs> this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we, yeah, we just let them draw. I mean, if they want to Odawara here, that's whatever. But, like... Can we make them draw a card? Does ultimating do anything? We could just get concealing... We could ultimate this, get concealing curtains back, and then activate the curtain. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know, man. It's up to you if you think this is a thing. Yeah, I don't know. Seems good. No necromancy anymore.
All right, well, round three, and as you can see, still no two drops. Just three drops. I'm gonna keep it though. I don't think it's a bad hand. Also, Ranger gets us like a uh, giver or concealed curtains. Concealing curtains actually seems really good on turn two or turn four rather. I mean, ideally we just draw Mox Jet, right? I mean, I know Mulligan is six isn't bad, but definitely feels good just being up two cards. I don't know. Is that just me? Does everybody like it? Oh, oh, they didn't get to see that either. So that's neat. Uh, we're going to play Swamp first because if we draw Dothy Voidwalker, I want to be able to play that guy. We don't have Scrubland though, which is kind of awkward. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. I mean, we just get underground, I guess. Seems fine. Oh god, also if this guy sticks with Mind Twist. It's stuck. Ugh. Ugh, some oh dear. So I think we just pass here and wait till next turn to get some cards. Oh dear. Remember that time we uh, played a Swamp first in case we wanted to play Dothy Voidwalker? And then we played the uh, Dothy Voidwalker? That's how we drew it up, the kids might say. Are they just, are they just, are they just trying to get us into a damnation? What in damnation? I mean, I don't know if I want to just mind twist for three or if like, if we play Ranger Captain, it gives them a good opening to damnation. Could also just sack it during their turn, but then maybe they have Mystic Confluence. We didn't see any other, I think it's just good at three. Especially with Dothy Voidwalker out. Mind twist of their own? <laughs> wow. The battle of the twists. That's hilarious. Well, that's not a great play, <laughs> so, you know. Unmarked Grave also doesn't do anything for us. So, uh, realistically, those just were not very good hits. But they still only have two cards in hand. How about this guy? Does this guy get your blessing? He does. Uh, Yeah, all right, good guy. I'll get Concealing Curtains. It's just a much better threat. I'm not going to play it now because if they do have Damnation, if they were able to keep a Damnation in hand, it's just terrible. So I'll let them, ta I'll let them tap out for it when I have six power on board. Actually, ten power on board. And then... Uh... Bribery. Uh, that's pretty good, I guess. They're going to get Solitude. Solitude's like the best creature they can get, I think. I guess we have a lot of creatures, though. Like they could, they could pick something else. I don't think they would. Maybe they do. I don't know. Bribery doesn't feel... Yep, yeah, obviously. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Yep, that seems fine. The 
Thieving Skydiver, huh? One, two, three. Like, we can play Curtains, activate Curtains, see what they have, and then path this guy. Yeah, I don't hate it. So, black. I'll just keep that up, obviously. Boogie Boogie. Necromancy and Exhume. Uh, let me choose an island. If you do, um, no, I don't care about either of those. Wow, that's really good for us. They have Necromancy and Exhume and not a single creature in play. So this is just lethal next turn, right? This guy has Menace and this guy flies. So I guess if they can deal with this guy, we got a game. They got one draw to do it. That was not it. Eh, might as well not take damage, right? So the hand is Exhume Necromancy. 2040. Seems pretty good. All right, let's finish it out. Let's see if we can. Oh, we got a one drop and a two drop. Yeah, definitely keeping it. This is new player one, two, three. Do you think they're new? No, probably not. They went to six. I do wish this was available in retro frame in real life without being foil. It's unfortunate when they make things only in foil. Okay, that's decent. I think we're just playing adversary here. I think it's adversary is better in the late game, but our hand does not look like we're going to be having a late late game adversary anytime soon. Plus, like I'd rather just start gaining life if we can. Cathar Commando is the other option, but I mean, if I'm attacking with a three one life linker versus a three one, I'd rather just gain like six to nine life. It could be extremely relevant. Plus, if we hit a land, this is good. Less good now. It's less good because I assume they're going to take it. That's my guess. I think they got a good choice here. I can play this. I need a card to play this, but it's very good if I get it. And I don't think these two are really in contention. Yeah, that's the one I would have taken as well. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we don't have to show them Concealing Curtains. We can just play Cathar Commando. Sure. Get bloody. They can actually loot here and then reanimate. That'd be neat. This isn't an artifact or enchantment bat, right? Just a regular bat? Okay. Yes, excellent. I just play three power creatures all day. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, 
Well, it is what it is. I did complain about no two drops, I guess. It's like Radio said, Radiohead, Radiohead said, you did it to yourself and that's why it really hurts. So just taking it, interesting. The Epicure can't be worth that much, man. <laughs> Any land and we can activate this guy or cast this guy. Okay, so they're going to throw the Breach us this turn, I think. Flame Tongue Kavu. Oh, that's sad. That's the one I didn't want you to hit. I'll make it pro red in case they have another burn spell. Do I want to Cathar Commando their Soul Ring? I don't think it matters now. They have two cards. That's not the land we're looking for, but it is a land. <laughs> uh, fascinating. Yeah, I guess we're just passing here. I forgot we had this in hand. We don't have a second white for it, I guess, so it doesn't really matter, but... I think this is where our first loss hits us, you know? Four mana. Three mana. Four mana. Archfiend of the Dross. That's interesting. Why did I block with that guy? Why didn't I block with this guy? That's pretty weird. Huh. Oh, I lose two. Well, that's interesting. They have two cards in hand. I guess this is actually better. Because <laughs> keeping this guy on board in case they have any shenanigans might be correct. God, I think we just gotta... I can think we just get rid of the Archfiend, right? Because it's a 6-6 six, six that Sheol dreads us every time we... Okay, sure. Oh, of course. <laughs> we could also Jason just bounce the draw, the Archfiend. That seems good. I like being able to be in a commanding position against a... with a Jace on board. <laughs> This is an easy block, and Jace will take one, and that's fine. We can either plus or just draw. Okay. Well, I feel like things are going to go south. That's disconcerting. No, don't like that. Oh, yes, okay. Well, they're really thinking about it for quite a bit, so... I 
I feel like it's not as obvious as we might have feared, but I feel like it's a gristle brand. Is it Archon? Which one do I want to reanimate? I don't know. It's Fury. Okay. Sounds good. That's great. That's less great. I guess they only get to kill one guy here. That's not super impressive. Oh, they get to kill Jace and our Cathar Commando. Well, that's something, I guess. That's a real pain in the ass. Guess I didn't play around Fury. My bad. Hmm. Does this do anything? I, I was thinking we could do this and then cast this. Cast a touch off of this, but it's going to be tapped. So do we just take like a million here? I feel like Shielder does actually a pretty good job of like holding them back though. So I'll just play Shielder here and try to mitigate some of the damage that we're going to be taking in the long term. <laughs> And if we hit any land, we can Thieving Skydiver and steal it. I guess we don't need a land for that, but we can keep up touch to blink. Fascinating. I mean, this is the only guy I can block, so I'm definitely just not going to take an extra four. Sure. Why the fuck not? <sighs> Christ. It's fucking exhausting. Yep. Great. Oh boy. Yep. All right. Like, I don't think any of these are good. Recruiter's not great. Wedding announcement, parallax way. We can play our own Archfiend. Let's have Trample. Just flying, huh? Torsten and Emrakul with nothing to really take advantage of them with. Yeah, I think our deck is good. I think our hand was just a little too slow and we got really stuck on mana the same way this hand is. Okay. Do they get to start with two extra cards this game? I, mean, I think it was just frustrating because they had the answer for everything, right? Like, we just... every Everything we played, they had an answer for. They mulligan to six. We're keeping. I don't want to pitch a land here. I think Ranger Captain is probably the best choice. So we can go get a Tundra. I think we want a second black and a second white. Hmm. I think we just take two and see what happens. Pretty much have to get a second white right now because this is actually as, as our blue and our white source. So we can't actually cast our lightning bolt it. I dare you. Soul ring it. That's good. That's a good one. Um, We can always get Tundra and we can always get Swamp. So I think just being able to see what we do hit is probably the best choice in keeping Marsh Flats options open. If we hit a Black Source, we can obviously get Tundra with this. And if we hit a... Oh, God. I have a... I have a Mox Ruby. Or a... Well, I have, it's a Mox Jet, isn't it? But I, I you wouldn't be able to tell from... Okay, so they have three cards and we can just make them discard two of them. Man, if only you were a Mox, huh? Oh, we can get an 
underground, but that doesn't let us play Elspeth. I think it's just got to be a Tundra. Do we just mind twist two out of the three cards in their hand? Or do we elite spellbinder? The problem is they can they have one, two, three, four, five. They have five mana. They can pretty much play anything in their hand. Whatever. We'll do it for two and hit Fury and Mountain. Yeah, if they just played Fury next turn, that would have been fairly sad. Not just because it kills this, but also because it's just a fat idiot. They do have a Faithless looting in the yard now. And now they don't. Beseech and Mountain. Lightning Bolt attack for four. No Lightning Bolt attack for two. Deal. Dothy Voidwalker. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Fiery Confluence, huh? Okie dokie. Well, does keep our guys alive, I guess. Bitter Reunion. Seems good. So now we know they have Fiery Confluence and one random card. Yeah, I don't have... Yeah, that's when you go on the toilet because you, you don't have faith whether it's a, a fart or a poop. The old faithless tooting. <laughs> I don't have much faith this is just going to be a toot, you know? And it's got to be this. This doesn't do anything. This doesn't do anything. I do feel like we're not winning this game, though. That's the correct choice. Well, that would have been the land that we wanted to play Archangel Elspeth with, but alas, it was not to be. We could just pop a Dothy Voidwalker down. Is bouncing anything good for us? Not really. I mean, they have to find an answer to Giver of Runes and then the next thing. They're one man away from casting Fiery Confluence. Their graveyard holds no secrets. Oh, they did nothing. That's good for us. Oh, that's really good for us. That was a great draw. 
Holy free holies. Um, I do think we don't want another white source. We're much more white centric here. This guy can't do anything. Uh, what was the reveal card? Moxjet? Yeah, that can go in the graveyard. This guy's now a 4-3. That's pretty cool, dude. Is this a Drew? What is this, a rogue? Oh, man, it's a rogue, so it triggers Season Dungeoneer. That's fantastic. Papa do like that. Graveyard Trespasser. Man, they could not play that guy fast enough. I'm not sure why. Like, they don't get to exile anything super cool. Mind twist? Sure. That seems good for us. Maybe we are doing okay. Definitely forging. Definitely forging on this guy. Oh, that's fascinating. We could actually play Luris, play Mox, play Teferi. Sure, let's do that. <laughs> this is a six, this is a three. I'm just gonna bounce this guy. And then attack for like a thousand damage. Choose target this guy. Get a creeper, which we can play because we have not played a land this turn. So they're going to take five and go to one. Okay, I think we win this game. I'm no expert, but... Well, at least we get a game three. Sure. Block a 1-1. One, one. Block a 2-2. Two, two. Block a 1-1. One, one. They get a land, so they can cast Fiery Confluence here. But I don't know what that does. Like, this guy survives as a 6-5. It costs all six mana. They could have like, actually, I mean, they haven't played anything for a few turns when they only had five, so they could just have six drops. They could have like Inferno Titan or Grave Titan, but then like, that's your play. And you still die to both Creeping Tar Pit, Flyer, Shadowy Guy, five damage from a trap. Yeah, okay. Do you have anything that messes with the graveyard? Not really. I almost kind of like Parallax Wave as a way to like save our guys against Fury or Fiery Confluence. Thieving Skydiver seems good when they have Mox and Soul Ring. I don't know. Our deck seems good. Wedding Announcement could be decent. Just buffing all our guys. It just does feel a little slow. There we go. Keep. I think we're actually, I don't even know if we're going to play. Oh, that's, is that better? Because then we get three mana on turn two. I want to play Ledger on, I want to play Shredder on turn two. It's not super exciting, but there's no way to play an untapped blue on turn two. And this is a turn three Elspeth, which is pretty good. What's the, what's the play? I don't know. Give her on one seems good, right? I 
Because we're not actually triggering this guy anytime soon, so it's really just a 1-3 flyer currently. And on turn 2, we can still play this and this. Yeah, that's fine. Interesting, but that does not do anything for us now. <sighs> yeah, we just play this. We could actually go twist for two, but that seems rough. So instead I'll just play this guy and pass. Oh my god, double mox. Wonderful. Oh, and a mana crypt. <laughs> so they have mox, emerald, mana crypt, soul ring, mox, jet. Seems good. Yep. All right. Wow, our hand was looking very good up until that point. Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. Yep, that's a hard guy to deal with on turn three. <laughs> I thought our hand was looking really good. We had a turn three Elspeth, huh? Uh, oh, God. I don't, I mean, like, Twist for Two doesn't seem like the play, because then we just, like, they have six cards. Like, we have to, to hit those two, you know? Which doesn't seem like a great, oper like, it just doesn't seem likely. Cool. Hmm, boy. They just never have any mana problems, which is nice. <laughs> uh... Heads? It just wasn't meant to be. Yeah, once you get that turn three Grave Titan into like, yeah, this is just game over. That's cool. Yep, awesome. Magic is a good game. Baleful, Teferi. Yeah, we just had nothing to deal with the turn three Grave Titan. Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Slam the like and subscribe buttons. I'll see you next time.